Elder Roger Roll, and this is the place where we dig into God's holy word, the Bible, his eternal pages. And with us today, we have Elder Bernard Linden to help us unpack this topic, Teaching Disciples. Welcome, Elder Bernard. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful opportunity to share your word to impart the things that you put on, on our hearts as we've studied your word. And so, God, we pray for our viewing and listening audience that the Holy Spirit will touch their hearts and minds as we talk about Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Teaching disciples. You know, Mark chapter 8, verse 34 says, When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also. He said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, Elder, this, <coughs> this <laughs> you're smiling because right the, the, the part that hits me here is let him deny himself himself. How that's, we can do that? That's a high hill to climb. <laughs> <laughs> that's a high hill to climb. <laughs> you know, um, I grew up, and my mother always say to me, don't be nobody's doormat. Mm. Um, and you always look out for number one. <laughs> <laughs> And okay. you know, you know that saying, number one is you. <laughs> yes, yes. And now the <laughs> Bible used is to say numero uno. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for you. Yeah. And now the Bible is saying, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. Back up on that. The, 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 the opposite. <laughs> the opposite direction. You know what that says to me? You got to be re-educated. Yes. You yes. got to be re-educated. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and that's not always easy because we, we're stubborn. We're fixed in our ways. And it's like asking the old expression is that you could bend a tree while it's young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. me and you who came to the faith. Oh, <laughs> not from my. infancy. No. Yeah. <laughs> to deny yourself. Yeah. Yeah. My entire life was robbed yeah. around myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. But I am glad to say that by God's grace, it's possible. Amen. Amen. It's possible. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit working in us. He can do anything. Amen. Eh? So, and, 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 and you said re-educate. And, and in today's terms, I would say you, got, you need to be reprogrammed. Uh -huh. they, 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 they wipe the <laughs> slate clean uh -huh. and, and put in a new uh -huh. set of uh, instructions of yeah, and yeah. In, in you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He <laughs> reprograms <laughs> us to, so that all the things that we've learned th that were wrong, we have to unlearn them. And the, as you say, the beauty of it is I can do all things, things through Christ strengthens me. Man, look here. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even, you know, yes, it's possible to to follow Christ. And he says, if you want to follow me, you have to deny self. You have to take up your cross mm -hmm. and follow him. You know, I like that the phrase, take up your cross. Okay. You know, uh, what is interesting about that is my cross in yours. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. My cross in yours. Yeah. Yeah. It says take up your cross. Yes, yes. Yes, sure. The burden. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Amen. Your lug, your lug. Very love specific. Uh -huh. And carry that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. carry that. Yeah. So it makes it an individual thing. Yes. You see? Yeah. And I've learned from over the years that a lot of people ain't interested in carrying their cross. They, no, sir. They're trying to carry everybody else on. Yeah, yeah. And leave theirs alone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a program at one point in time, and I said to the church, we've been taught to go out in groups. But sister, I ain't sending you out 
because you're a good candidate to go before people. You stay right here in the church, and when they come, you smile them to pieces. Smile them to pieces. Because you got to know what God has called you to do. Yes. And if it's just to be a smile, yeah. a, a doorkeeper in the yeah. church of God, yeah. house of God, where you only yeah. smile with the individuals yeah. when they come, yeah. you carry yeah. your ministry and yeah. carry it with dignity. Yes, yes. You know? And yeah. the unfortunate thing is, we live in a society, and mind you not, programs of the church are good, but sometimes it's about making everybody or giving everybody the same cross. And everybody, that's why the scripture says, take up your cross. Yes. And we got to understand that my individual journey may not be your journey. Yes, yes. My individual burden may not be your burden. Yes. And that's why I say to people, and I say this to Elder Battle often, I say, listen, You'll find people where nobody else will find them. Because you're the fellow who can call everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and and you are you are so correct. Yeah. Um and even and and he and I speaking uh just yesterday, he he he, he said, Elder Roll, have you heard lately from Brother So and so? And I and I say, No, he said, because I see my perhaps you should give him a call. I said, I'll do that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yes, and that's and that's uh, God has also given us certain gifts, mm -hmm. and your gifting is different than my, my gift. gift. You know, God, each yeah. of us as an individual mm -hmm. is here for a purpose, mm -hmm. and so even in our with taking our cross, and as you mentioned, our ministry, mm -hmm. and all the things that God has called mm -hmm. us to do, we have to first find out through uh, listening. And being led by the Spirit mm -hmm. of exactly what why. God would happen. Yes, yes. yes. And once you know that, mm -hmm. then you're able to excel and to, in the purposes that God has called you for. And I just want to quickly say I can remember um, early in my church life, a pastor uh, called me and he said, uh, Brother Roger, I want you to do this, this, and this. Well, fortunately for me, I had been. Uh, spending time with Pastor Jeremiah Duncan, mm -hmm. and uh, God had uh, shown me to be uh, a part of a prayer ministry, and so I said mm -hmm. to him, Pastor, I respect that, but God has shown me to be a part of a part of the prayer ministry of this church. Mm -hmm. And once I said that, he said, he said okay, mm -hmm. and he supported it. Mm -hmm. But imagine had I not uh, spend that time with mm -hmm. God and found that out. Then I would have just followed because it's the pastor. Yeah, yeah. you know the pastor mm -hmm. say, but it's and that's why I encourage people find out what God wants you, you to do, do. Yeah. and then go do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that's that's it. So take up your cross, deny self, and, and follow Him. Mm -hmm. um, and our friend, one of my favorite writers, Ellen White. Uh, she writes in the Desire of Ages, mm -hmm. and uh, I encourage anybody if they get a chance to read the book, The Desire of Ages, because Christ is the desire of ages. And she writes on page 440, by all that has given us advantage over another. Uh, and and, 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 and it, I found this quote very poignant. All, that, all the things that has given us advantage over another, and she writes, be it education and refinement, nobility of character, mm -hmm. Christian training, mm -hmm. religious experience, mm -hmm. She says that we are in debt to those less favored. Amen. And so far as lies in our power, we are to minister unto them. Mm -hmm. If we are strong, we are to stay up the hands of the weak. Mm -hmm. Angels of glory that do always behold the face of the Father in heaven. Joy in ministering to his little ones. Trembling souls who have many objectionable traits of character mm -hmm. are their special charge. Mm -hmm. Angels are ever present where they are most needed with those who have the hardest battle with self to fight and whose surroundings are the most discouraging. And this, and in this ministry, Christ's true followers will cooperate. Amen. <laughs> so, Amen. <laughs> can you imagine? Very often, we 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 
we want to love the lovely. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, the angels find joy in loving the unlovely, mm -hmm. those with objectionable traits of character. And, and as, as we were, were talking about earlier, we, we have to, I always encourage people, uh, when you see someone, don't look at them as they are. Mm -hmm. Look at them as what God would have them to be. Because Amen. that's, how, that's how Christ looks at us. Yeah. When Christ saw me in all the mess, you know, I have, I have a few friends, well, used to be friends, I need to correct that, who I used to hang out with before coming to Christ. Mm -hmm. And after coming to Christ, and I, I, you know, happily go to share the gospel with them. I learned, uh, didn't tell, one of them didn't tell me to my face, and a close friend, but I learned from another friend. He said, how Roger can come talk with preaching Jesus to me? I know Roger. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that he could come and talk about Christianity. Mm -hmm. Whereas God takes anyone in their mess mm -hmm. and changes them for his glory. Amen. Amen. So, so how often? <clears throat> I want to look at Mark chapter 8, and I'm going to read verses 27 to 29, and then I, I, I want you to, I'd like for you to comment on it, Elder. Mark chapters, chapter 8, verse 27 to 29, and it reads, And Jesus and his disciples went away to the town of Caesarea Philippi, and on the road he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. So how often do we confess, do we share with others as, as, as a, a, a church, as a group, as an individual? How often should we be sharing our belief that what Peter said, Jesus is the Christ? Because in, in this illustration, Christ actually pulled him aside and said, okay, tell me what people say that I am mm -hmm. and they quickly answered mm -hmm. and then uh, the beauty of it is he, he puts it quite poignantly directly <laughs> so who do you say that who I am? you say that I am <laughs> and that's that's interesting you know because one of the things that happens is that and we, we've heard the expression um, you gotta go to God for yourself yes sir yes sir you can't live your relationship with God under your mother's experience, mm. under your father's experience, under the pastor's experience, you gotta have a personal relationship yes. with God. Yes. For you. Yes. You know, and so when if I was there, and pardon this expression, if I was there and in Jesus' days, and guess what? He's still asking me that today. <laughs> Who do you <laughs> yes. say that I am? Yes. And I'm, I just tell people, it's because he is Lord of my life. That's it. That's it. Yes, Elder. He is That's Lord it. of my life. Yes. Yes. So people say, but how come you don't get mad? I say, because Christ is Lord of my life. Yes, yes. And I know what my <laughs> life is like. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> and I know where he bought me from. Yes. yes. And I know what he is doing for me every single day of my life. Yes. He is Lord of my life. Yes. Yes. And so that experience helps me in my walk with him every day. Helps me in my association with others every day. Amen. My wife said yes. to me, how come you don't get mad with the staff? That's because you buddy and buddy in them. <laughs> I say, it ain't nobody and buddy in them. It's because I know where Christ brought me from. Yes. And I know what he's asking me to do. Love them in their failures. Yes, yes. And like I shared to the Sabbath school 
The lady burned up the pot of food. And I was like, what you can do with the food? Throw it away. Because <laughs> I burned up a number of pot before. <laughs> you see, too often, as individuals, we forget where we were. Yes. And we forget that the, that the times that God has forgiven us and shown us compassion. Yes. And I say to people often, the minute you forget where you come from, you can't handle people. No, no. You're in trouble. Yes. <laughs> you're in tr- right. yeah. Big, big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. The minute yeah. you forget where God brought you from, yeah. and the minute you think that you're where you are because you did something, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah. When you think you arrived, that's a problem. Ah. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. only that, you know. If you think you get there by yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Then you're in trouble. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so as 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 you point out, you know, it, it's it's a daily thing with Christ. Mm-hmm. And then I like how you say it, because as as mentioned, you said we when we read the scripture, often we look at it back in that day. Mm-hmm. But as you said, today mm-hmm. Your, that question is it's being asked, asked to me. Yeah. Still being asked. And how to you gonna answer? And every single day. You would who say Who do you that, say that I am? You are Lord of my, my life. life. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta live that. Yes, sir. You gotta live yes, that. Because guess what? The minute you open your mouth that Christ is Lord of your life, you can be tested. Yes, sir. You can be tested. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you can be tested. Yes, sir. So yeah, yeah. you say he's Lord of your life. Let me see how you can handle this. So how how do, how do you handle, uh, my elder? How do you handle? How do you balance? You know, there, there are times you have what we call mountaintop experiences, mm-hmm. where where things are so right, you're so connected, you see the Father mm-hmm. in in everything, and then there are other times where, when you have the down on the plane or in the valley experience, where you will, like Christ even said. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? How do you balance these these times and yet each in every time say you are Lord of my life? You know, um, I could tell you how I just handle it because I have a lot of those experiences. Okay. Um, when my daughter died, and pardon me going back to this experience, somebody asked me, but Lennon, how are you handling that? And their statement to me was, I feel your pain. And I'm like, what pain? Oh, mercy. Uh, and they say, what do you mean, what pain? I, say, I said to them, listen, the same God who brought me to it can take me through it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And guess what? In this time... He ain't leave me. <laughs> okay, he ain't sir. leave me. So okay. on my on my journey, I have often said to people, listen, you gotta practice living the word. Mm-hmm. You just can't talk about it. You gotta practice living it. And so, sure, there are days when I'm up. And like I told you earlier, the the experience about the financial difficulty and asking God to fix it, and then God shut down the whole world just to fix my problem. (laughs) (laughs) Listen to me. You see, because here am I in the valley, and I'm saying, Lord, where you is? Where you is? Because I'm always on top of my bills, but where you are now? Mm -hmm. And then he said, I get up the next morning, the news come over, the whole financial world shut down. You know, and I say, there goes God. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you gotta always, you got to always be looking for Him. Yes, sir. Looking yes, for sir. Him in the valley. You yes. look for Him, and yes. on top of the mountain, when you could see Him clearly, you look for Him. Look over the horizon. Look up to the horizon yes. in the valley. Yes. So if you're always looking for Him, you will always find Him. You will seek Me, and you will find, find me, me when you search, search for, for me. me with all my heart, Ooh. with all your. And <laughs> guess what He said. I will never leave you. you so the, you. the yes, good sir. news is that in the valley, there he is. He's right there. Right there. <laughs> but if you don't look for him, the adversary will cover you. Yes. That you yes. forget to look to the God of the mountain. Yes, sir. 
Yes, and sir. guess what? While you being covered, the only thing you could see is your problems. Mm. I see, and 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 you are so right. Very often when I, when I get home and I'm talking with my wife, I I and I I say that you know God really loved me mm-hmm. because I I yes, I sir. work outdoors and you know the weather may be a factor uh-huh. and there are times I have to finish a job and I say Lord help me uh-huh. and you know He will hold back the rain long enough to allow me to finish that job. Uh-huh. As soon as I get in the car, pour it out. Yeah. And I, I, I tell God really love me. Yeah. He just let me see, do the see, finish what, my what work. We, what we don't realize is that we take the Bible, right? And we don't learn to apply it to our lives. Ah. We talk about Joshua and God stand causing the sun to stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, yes, yes. But in our lives, he's still doing great things. Yes, yes, sir. But you are not looking for it. <laughs> I, I tell you another experience, and uh, they, they may hold me hold this against me, but that's okay. I, when we were agape, we were praying. We were praying that God would allow the church to grow. We were praying that God would build us a new church and that, that, that the membership would increase and we had this great expectation, <laughs> you know. And, and, and so, and then the conference came up with this. Not this, only you, Ella. <laughs> Same prayer. This, this wonderful, this wonderful program. Yeah. And I said, "There goes God." <laughs> hey, look at God again. The church has grown, yeah. and we're on yeah. our way to getting yeah. a new building. Yeah. There goes God yeah. again in yeah. answer to our prayer. Yeah. And I always say to people, brethren, when you didn't pray. You look for the answer. Look for the answer. Too often as Christians we pray and we don't look for the answer. Mm. I expect my God to hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I expect him to answer me. So yes. every day I get up, I'm looking for the yes, answer. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. by looking, yes. I just find out yes. that there's the answer. Yes. You know, yes. there's the answer. A lot of times we missed it. We missed it because we stopped looking. Mm. So, so Elder, want to want to shift gears in the last few moments we, we we have here, and talk about the difference between world greatness mm-hmm. and biblical greatness. Um, because the way the world views views greatness, uh, maybe in celebrities or. <laughs> persons with a lot of wealth or persons who are in powerful positions. But we don't really see that as greatness in the Bible. It seems that God views greatness in a different light. Mm-hmm. Christians, how should we see greatness as opposed to how the world sees it? The only way I know how to answer that is you got to view it the way Jesus view it. Your relationship with God. Your relationship with God is what makes you great. Mm. And please pardon this expression. It is not the education. It is not the money in the bank. It is not your status in life. It's your relationship with God that Amen. makes you great. Yes. yes. When you could get up in the morning and talk to the king of the universe, <laughs> And okay. have him answer you mm. as a friend. Uh huh. That's greatness. And, when you you ain't got to make no special appointment. You ain't got to make no special appointment. Right, you right to, there, out of your bed, drop on your knees. Uh, guess what? You didn't even have to drop on your knees because sometimes I just lay yeah. down on my back. <laughs> yeah. so, my God, I'm thanking you. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You see, that's greatness. And, and the unfortunate thing is the church hasn't said to the congregation, your relationship with God is what is your greatest value. Greatest, that's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not where you work, not your status, okay. your relationship with God. Not not a bunch and, of letters and, after your name from which you no. achieved. Oh, no. Okay. And guess what? When you go back to the memory text, it says it quite plainly. 
denying yourself, <laughs> picking up your rec- cross, yes. and following him. Yes, yes, yes. That's your greatness. Yes. And guess what? That'll be your greatness throughout eternity. Because <laughs> <laughs> your money in the bank ain't going you to hell with <laughs> I guess when the car got the car got drive there. <laughs> so it don't matter what you're driving, the car gets you there. Yes. It's your yes. relationship yes. with God. Yes. That gets you there. Yes. And that's where your greatness lies. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so in, in this relationship that we have with our Savior, and uh we we recognize that uh He has saved us from our sins, and so it, and when he saved, when he healed people, he mm-hmm. often would say, "Go and sin no more." Mm-hmm. And so, how can we get to the point where we take sin in so seriously that, as as the, the 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 word says, that it is better to enter heaven if if your right hand offend you, mm-hmm. uh, chop it off. It's better to enter heaven maimed mm-hmm. with one hand, and obviously that's in a spiritual sense than to. Uh, miss out on heaven, so to speak. So how can we get to the point where when we see sin, it's so ugly, it's so hateful, it's so repulsive that we recognize that we, the beauty is Jesus as opposed to sin, which is from the devil. You know, the only way to do that, and I go back to the same thing I said earlier, the closer you get to God, and Ellen White bears this out, the closer you get to God, the more repelling you will see sin. So what that says to me is that the Bible makes it clear too, is that we ought to fight the good fight of faith. So what that says to me, build your relationship with God. Yes, sir. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Yes. You see, that, that has to be a daily process. You got to do this every day. I'm in the business of getting closer to God. I'm in the business of getting closer to God. You know what they, they teach you? Um, in, in, in When you're learning about currency and to identify the good ones from the bad ones, they say study the good. Don't worry about the Don't bad. Worry. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And if you yes. know enough good, if you have a good relationship with God, then what will happen is the transforming of work of the Holy Spirit will take place in your life, then sin becomes more repelling. Why? Because you're building on a relationship with God. You and God get Amen. so close. Yes, yes. You Amen. and God get so close. And guess what? You're no longer seeing sin through your eyes, you know. You're seeing it through the eyes Ooh. of your Savior. Powerful. Powerful. And that's what's important. Amen. So what you do to, is build your relationship with God it every day. Draw closer to your Savior. And as you draw closer to Him, sin then becomes rebellion. Amen. Amen. So we'd like to thank you, Elder Bernard Linden, for sharing us, uh, uh, literally, our our topic, Teaching Disciples. I think you've taught a number of uh, disciples and non-disciples in some of the things of Christ. So we appreciate you coming here today. We say thank you. You're welcome. And we'd also like to thank our viewing and listening audience for joining us once again here on Eternal Pages. And we encourage you to study God's Word and then go and live it. Amen.